Okay. Uh, now, my class, I expect y'all to write something down so they make sure that you got this in your head. Y'all, Miss Perkins' class, y'all gonna do whatever. <laughs> All right. What I'm gonna do at first? Okay. What I'm gonna do at first is I'm just gonna show kind of the basics of constructive and destructive interference. Okay. The basics. Yesterday, everybody did the Slinky Lab, so we we're shaking it. You know, and, and hopefully you saw, like, when two waves came together, they, they hit each other and then they did something. Okay? So, what did the waves do if, if one wave, let's just draw it. So, we got, we got one wave, we got another wave. Now, if you don't have the sketching ability that I have, that's okay. I've been doing this for years, so that's why I'm so good. All right. Are you sure? So, so, I got two waves, and they're both on the same side. Now, if two waves, two wave pulses, okay, because it's not a complete wave, it's half a wave, right? So, if I have two wave pulses, and they're both on the same side, we say that's in phase. Okay? So, they're in phase. Now, if you have two wave pulses, and they come together, what happens? Okay? It kind of looks... It kind of looks like they come together, they hit each other, and then they bounce off, right? Just like if you're running down the hallway and you run into the wall, and boom, you bounce off. But in order to bounce off something, okay, like when you run into something, you kind of have to hit something. But waves, waves are energy, okay? There's nothing to bounce off. Energy doesn't get destroyed, it doesn't bounce off. It passes right past each other. So what really happens is instead of them bouncing off of each other, and I know it's wrong size, but what really happened is they just switched spots. They passed right past each other, no problem at all. So both ways are shoo, right past each other, okay? Nothing interesting going on, except, yes? When it, when it collides, doesn't the wave like get bigger? Yep, that's what we're talking about. So, as far as waves are concerned, they just pass right by, by each other. Now, one thing that they do do, okay? <laughs> one thing that they do do, yeah, I've said it twice. All right, so one thing that they do as well, yeah, that's not okay, is that when they do run into each other, okay, the energy passes by, no problem at all. However, the medium itself the energy is picking this medium up, right? The string, or the slinky, or whatever is passing through. And this piece of the string is also being picked up by the energy. So if you have twice as much energy in the same space, then you have to lift the string twice as high in order for the string to kind of fit all of the energy into it. So what you would end up with is hill number one. It's still trucking. It's still going that direction. But now hill two, it goes over the top of hill one. Okay, so it runs over the top of it. They don't pass through each other kind of like that. It kind of runs over the top. Now, you could say that hill two is on the bottom and hill one's on the top. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but the effect is you get twice, twice the, the amplitude. Right? Now this isn't exactly what happens, but it's a good way of thinking. It's a way to keep it straight in your head. Okay? Now, when you go to a construction site, what are they generally doing at a construction site? Yeah. What does the word construction mean? Making some mats. Yeah. Like means to build, right? Yeah. Means to, to make stuff? Yeah. So when you go to a construction site, they're building stuff. Well, when we have two waves and they run into each other, they're building a larger wave. And so we call that a constructive interference. Okay? So you have constructive interference. If two waves, and this is the important part, okay? Make a note someplace. If two waves are in phase and then they interfere with each other, they're in the way of each other, then they construct, they have constructive interference. Can you repeat that? Two waves are in phase, they pass so they interfere, when they interfere, it's constructive interference. The flip side of that is what if one wave is on top and one wave is sunk below? They have one and two. Well, now one way of looking at this is when, when <coughs> hill number one runs into hill two, hill one falls down into two and fills it up. 
temporarily. And so if hill one and hill two are the same size, then hill number one will fill hill number two completely. And so if they fill themselves completely, the moment that they collide, you end up with no wave. Okay? Now, what happened to the energy? The energy didn't get destroyed, remember, okay? Conservation of energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So the energy is not gone. What happened is we were lifting, here we were lifting the string up. Here you're pulling the string down. And so if you add those two actions together, you end up with the string in the middle. The same forces are still present. So the energy is still there. It's just the string gets straightened out. Okay? As soon as it passes by, though, then we end up with a hill here and a depression there. Questions? So now you started with a big wave and you end up with no wave, and so they call that destructive interference. So we have constructive when you have two waves in phase on the same side. When they're out of phase, meaning one's on top and one's on bottom, then you get destructive interference. Okay? Yes, sir? Is that why like, you lose calls on the cell phone and stuff? No, that's something else. What? Okay. That's something else. But it's so random. Like. Okay. No, that's a good question, though. Because they say that you know it's, it's, it's interfering with the call. Ooh. Right? Oh. Right? Well, what's happening there most of the time is like when you like pass under a hill or <laughs> you come in my room, right? We have this room has got a lot of metal around it. The roof is metal. You know, a lot of the, the supports are metal. And so we end up with something that's it's, it's similar to what they call a Faraday cage. And so what happens is it, it blocks out all the electromagnetic waves. And so you lose your calls. Which is why I hear everybody's phone going on and off, on and off, but you know, oh, that's you mine. got a mess with the yeah. all the time. Yeah. Okay, now, here's the thing though, okay? Here's the thing. This isn't, just strings is not the real application of this, okay? This is true of any kind of wave, whether it be light wave or sound wave or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you constructive and destructive interference with sound, and then I'm going to show it to you with light. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off, okay, uh, and this is a general application. I have two subwoofers here, and if you've ever looked at the back of a subwoofer box that's not homemade, then on the back they have what's called a phase switch, and now you know what phase means, right? If they're in phase, they're on the same side. If they're out of phase, they're opposite. Well, on a sound wave, remember the sound wave, it works, it's a compression wave, right? And remember with your slinky, when the, you have the compression wave on, let me turn that on real quick. When you have the compression wave, what's happening is you smash something together and then it spreads back out. Well, how a subwoofer works is it smashes forward and back and smashes the air in front of it and it spreads out, that smashed air does. Okay, so we have a compression wave as opposed to a transverse wave. Okay? So if both speakers are both smashing out at the same time, you end up with the same thing as having two crests. You have two crests, so they're both in phase, and when they run into each other, because sound waves don't move straight lines, they open up, they, they radiate out. And so as they start to radiate out, these two waves will interfere with each other. They'll run into each other. So if they're in phase and they're running into each other, what do you think will happen? They'll just like combine. They'll combine. So what's that going to sound like? Volume. It's going to sound like louder volume. It's going to sound like louder volume, right? It's going to be twice as much. So let's check it out. What I have over here is a lot of equipment. Uh, but basically, I have this little box. It's a function generator. And it's going to send a single tone to both speakers. This isn't stereo, so it's not left channel and right channel where they can play their own tone. This is a mono signal, so that both are playing exactly the same tone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. Uh, and let me see if I can... We're going to tune it to about 80 hertz, because if I go lower than 80 hertz, then it starts interfering with the other classrooms and stuff. Um, and that's the wrong speaker, so hold on just one more. Alright, so that's a subwoofer, right? That's this black one, I'm turning it up. Now what I need, okay, what I need for y'all to do 
is to kind of make a mental note about how loud it is. Okay? Because we want both our waves, well, I took it off the screen, but we want both of our waves to have the same height. Because if they have the same height, then they react better. It's more obvious what's happening. Okay? So I want the tones to be about the same, the same loudness. Okay? Because amplitude is volume to us. So we say, okay, well, I recognize that that's a certain, certain volume. So everybody got that volume in their head. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this one down and I'm going to turn the other one off. Is that about right? Too loud or? Too loud. I'm on this side so I hear it differently than y'all hear. A little bit, so it's too loud? So I'll turn it down a little. Right there? Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one on to the same loudness that I just had it. Okay? And what, what I want you to do is listen for what, what's different. Now, common sense reigns here. So now both of them are playing at the same volume. Okay? They're both running into each other, and so you get a louder sound. Okay? You have constructive interference happening. But like I said earlier, Like I said earlier, on the back of a subwoofer, there's a little switch, and it's called the phase switch. And the phase switch tells the subwoofer, hey, instead of going out when I tell you to go out, I want you to go in. I want you to do the reverse. It's the same thing as if you took the, the red wire and the black wire and put the black wire and the red wire and the red wire and the black wire. You get the exact opposite of what you should have. So you're switching phase. Subwoofers allow you to switch phase because sometimes you want it to be out of phase and sometimes you want it in phase and let me show you why. So now I have both subwoofers on and now I'm going to switch them out of phase and listen for the change. Did y'all hear that? The sound didn't go away because it's not perfect. It's, you know, we're getting some reflection in that. But notice the difference. It's, it's marked. Out of phase, in phase. That's why they put the little button on. Because not only is it a function of how loud they are and their phase, but it's also position. So sometimes it's more advantageous to have the two subwoofers based on where they're at to be out of phase so that when the waves actually reach you, the waves are in phase. Because if I moved one subwoofer half a wavelength out, then the waves would be out of phase when they reach you. And so, in this particular instance, I want them to be in phase, but that's not always the case. It's not always the case. Can you think, does anybody think of a technology that would use this exact same principle? It has to do with acoustics, okay? So, listening or hearing. When would you want to be able to get rid of something? Okay, soundproofing, what else? So, what do you mean by soundproofing? Give me hints. They're headphones. Bose makes them. What, are, what, are, what do they use? They, no, they have noise canceling, right? Noise canceling. Well, what they're doing is they're taking the active sound that they're getting, they're playing the exact same sound, but they're playing it out of phase. And so it cancels out the sound. And so it's easier on your ears. You're actually getting twice the sound, there's twice the amount of sound, it's just that since it's out of phase, it affects your eardrum less. So it cancels the noise. Right? So that's, that's the same principle. It's not exactly how they do it, but that's the same gist of it. Alright, so that's in phase, out of phase. Okay?